Hello, everyone, and welcome to TSAM Digital. I'm Anna Luisa, and today I am joined by Glenn Murphy, the Chief Operating Officer of Moultrie Investor Services. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you, Anna. It's a pleasure to speak to you today. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, so, Glenn, today we wanted to chat about um, 2022 expectations for the asset management and investment community. We're going to focus on SMEs. Um, so, what would you say are the key investment services priorities for the year to come? I'd say definitely within investment servicing, um, a big more uh, there will be much more of a focus on asset servicing efficiencies. Um, a natural part of that is uh, what can be utilised for innovation. Uh, so, for example, it might be looking at robotics or machine learning opportunities. Um, the industry has certainly come a lot further over the past uh, two years, three years, and um, I think it's really to take on a few more of those gains and opportunities around efficiencies that are really out there. So, I, I certainly. I certainly do think robotics will be a big driver in the industry. I think that's uh, sort of that that's really found its place and now actually just needs to extend beyond that as well. Sounds really exciting. Um, and I was wondering, how do you balance competing needs for end investors through investment administration? Yeah, that's, that's a really good um, question. Uh, so obviously, when we're thinking about the end investor, it's about how we ensure that what we're giving them in terms of information is as accurate as possible, and it's done in the most timely possible way. Uh, so if we think about things like uh, the end investor's expectations, it might be around digital reporting or the type of reporting they receive, and how we can actually get to ensure that information is serviced as quickly and as efficiently as possible is really a, you know, a dream for the end investor because it means that they'll be able to look at their reporting, look at it in perhaps in real time and be able to make uh, decisions based upon that, but also reflect on the information that's available. Um, we, we know that we're moving into a, a sort of an age where aggregation of data is so, it's so important, but also it's how you actually maintain that data. And so the ability to actually make that as efficient and as accurate and as high as quality as possible for the end investor becomes even more key. And, and also just on top of that is also the investment management decision making process, because the greater the quality that you place on that data, uh, it means that the better their decision making process is in terms of what they want to invest in for the benefit of the end, end investor too. Absolutely. And sort of looking forward to 2022, uh, what would you say are the kind of key challenges that the industry needs to meet? Um, no, I, I would say it's, uh, it's interesting, actually, because if, you, if we think about the industry as a whole, um, it invests in various assets. Um, you know, the asset classes that it invests in uh, ranges from equities to fixed income bonds, but also to private equity. And so there has been a real sort of um, a big push, obviously, moving beyond global equities into areas where it might be fixed income or longer term investments, such as private equity. And it will really be interesting to see if that actually um, grows or if it stays the same or actually if it reduces um, towards um, back towards the likes of fixed income where people have a lot more confidence around long-term strategies on bonds, investment in bonds, etc. So for us, from our asset servicing perspective, where we are obviously very focused on um, global equities as well as um, private equities as well, um, it will be interesting to see if that sort of efforts in those areas um, decrease and move backwards more towards those sort of long-term investments, buy and hold areas such as uh, bonds or fixed income, even cash, for example, and um, because that takes it away from all of those other areas, which have seen a, a lot more of an interest over the past recent years in private equity. Um, so, so, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting for a service asset servicing model uh, to see how the investment management decision making process will change uh, in the light of things like increased inflation, uh, changes in terms of some of the underlying factors uh, that they are naturally in the macroeconomic landscape that really then start to focus on the def difference in those asset servicing areas. So, that, so that's going to be a, um, you know, a, real, a real sort of interest. And that obviously, from an asset servicing perspective, is one part of our ecosystem. And then the other side is how we're thinking about the end investor and bringing options to the end investor, whether that's improvements in digital reporting or whether that's improvements in the, the level of client reporting expectations that is more uh, drill down, look through, you know, really being able to get to, into more of the information and data that's available. I suspect there's more of that to come. Um, a good example of that, Anna, is, of course, if we look at um, 
um, ESG offerings. As we're seeing more of the data become available uh, to enhance our ESG understanding around certain assets or equities, people are going to start looking for that to be available to the end investor as part of that client reporting um, uh, uh, you know, facility that's available. And so there's going to be much more of a drive around the data that's available to the end investor, I suspect. Thank you for that. And um, since we're grappling with so many different changes, I was wondering, um, are there any emerging trends, other emerging trends that you haven't mentioned that asset managers need to respond to? So um, I, I suspect because of the pandemic, um, there has been a little bit of a lull in the regulatory um, expectations, uh, the changes coming through from the jurisdictional regulators, wherever a, a company is. Obviously, for us, it's the UK landscape with the SCA, but of course, the SEC, etc. Now, now beyond the pandemic, where they were a little bit more sort of light touch in terms of generating more regulation, uh, beyond the pandemic, you can of course see that the drivers are starting to come through. And, and certain aspects of that might be, for example, in the UK FCA operational resilience uh, coming through on the, on the continent. It's also around fund regulation, whether there's improvements for investor value associated with funds. You can see a lot more coming through, obviously, with SFDR on the ESG landscape and so obviously the the regulators are really starting to sort of recognize that yes businesses needed some time to adapt to the pandemic but now they've come through it uh, regulators doing what regulators do obviously want to um, bring about end investor uh, confidence and assurances and so more regulation is likely to come so i, I unfortunately unfortunately that's that's an emerging trend um, and 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 we have to be realistic around that um, i suspect there is still more to be done around innovation i think that um, you know if we look at uh, what um, investors and uh, the investment managers are looking for, they're looking for a lot more capability in order to support their investment management decision-making process. And yes, there is obviously an asset servicing aspect to this, but uh, something I would imagine is just how the relationship with the investment manager and the end investor is complemented. Uh, technology continues to be uh, you know, ev in everybody's sort of quarter, top quarter, uh, in terms of the go-to, whether that's in terms of multi-channel communication methods, efforts so that um, the end investor can have confidence and also the ability to uh, communicate with their investment manager in multiple different manners. Uh, that, that's, I think that's also another go-to and continues to be a go-to. Um, and uh, you know, it, it also goes hand in hand with this is that um, the investment manager also wants the capability and the ability to make lots of uh, good decisions based on information and analytics that they have at their disposal. So again, harvesting all of the information that's available within the industry and presenting that back to the investment manager so they're able to um, you know complement their decision making uh, is going to become increasingly key especially as we see for the investment manager a little bit more volatility coming into the marketplace where and, and an example of that obviously is inflationary pressures uh, is, is, is producing the investment manager to think well beyond perhaps global equities starting to think again about fixed, fixed income or other asset classes in order to support the end Wow, it sounds like we have a lot on our plates for next year. Um, I really definitely look forward to, to catching up in the new year and see how we track on that. Thank you so much, Glenn, for today. Thank you, Anna.